Hi, this is Randy from Fried Eggs Golf and welcome back to the channel. Today we are on a mission and really this is like step one of the mission, but nevertheless, we are trying to succeed where we have in the past failed. And of course, what I'm referring to is the video where we tried to make this green as fast as we could. In that video, we threw everything that we possibly could at trying to speed this thing up. And I still don't think it was more than like a nine on the step meter, which is tragically slow, especially compared to where we have been in the past on this green. Now, after we posted that, my dad and I had a little chat and we were kind of like trying to think of what, what went wrong, like where, what are we missing? And the best we could come up with was that he was, I believe last year at 150 thousandths of an inch, he raised it up to 155 thousandths of an inch. And I was trying to like tell my dad, I was like, I don't think that five thousandths of an inch is going to make that much of a difference between the green as far as being that fast. In today's video, we're gonna travel a little farther down that wormhole and attempts to figure out what it was that made this green so slow. And the first part of that is checking the cut height of our mower. And uh, we think that we have not only the knowledge, but the equipment to fix it. Let's head over to the garage. So I went over to the garage to find my dad. He was not there. Uh, inside eating potato chips. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So now to the garage. All right, so here we are in this very official looking workspace, which uh, took us about 45 minutes to make it look this professional. <laughs> but what we have laid out on this table here is basically uh, the tools that we're going to use today to try to change the cut height on the Greensmaster 1000, which is my dad's mower that he used to cut his green and fringe with. Now, uh, before we get started, because Unfortunately, yesterday I kind of like teased this all to my dad at a family gathering. When I showed him the actual cut height of his green mower, it was like telling your child that that doesn't exist. <laughs> now the important thing I need to introduce you today is actually what is inside this box right here. It is a very important instrument when it comes to changing the height of a greens mower or real mower. Um, it was sent to us actually by uh, AccuProducts which is really cool because, and you guys know as well as anyone, that anytime someone helps out the channel, I'm just immensely grateful because I really don't see why anyone would help two idiots out doing anything like this. So I always like to make sure that I'm uh, very appreciative of Acu products and what they sent us right here in this box, which we're gonna show you right now. You wanna get that side? Yeah. Let's make this. Come on down, don't you wanna go down? Come on brothers, let's go down. Did you make a face? <laughs> There's a flashlight. What is inside this very fancy looking box is what is called an Accu gauge. And I will actually, we probably should put a disclaimer on this video, no idea what we're doing. This is all new to us. We've never used something like this before. Uh, having acquired it though, we have watched a few YouTube videos. Yep, yep. I feel like that's important to put And they on. were all Accu gauge videos that I watched. Let's so. get the name right, Accu gauge. Accu gauge. There you go, Accu perfectly honest. Yeah. Thanks, by the way. But basically what this is, is just a very fine-tuned instrument to be able to measure the cut height of a mower. Uh, we'll show you in a little bit more detail of how that works actually on the mower here in just a little bit. But just wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to, to kind of take a look at this thing uh, and how it's packaged and how obviously delicate it is because it comes in like, I mean, I haven't even seen telescopes packaged yeah. this way before. So uh, it's really a cool piece of equipment. Like I said, we'll get into how it works a little bit further uh, down the road here, but very important part of today's uh, production. This right here is probably gonna be leaned on pretty heavily throughout yep. the video. This is my dad's uh, Toro Greensmaster 1000 manual, which, has it ever been opened? Oh yeah. Oh, plenty of times. We sure. messed with that thing last year, remember? Oh yeah, when we had to put the, it back together. When you went backwards and... Yeah, so basically this gives you like, uh, like parts catalog, everything that you need to know, every single moving piece in this mower is represented in this manual. It is wildly important when you're trying to figure out where things go once you take them apart. And then, talk about that. where's it at? You had it, I thought you had it bookmarked. Would where, you like me to find this for you? This is all just parts. Where's the... Oh man, the kid. I don't use a lot of manuals. 
This is gonna be a real snooze fest for you uh, folks that like to rap videos out there because this is really gonna But if you have a greens master. Oh, you're gonna be on the edge of your seat this week. <laughs> you're gonna be like, I can't believe these guys own this and they have no idea what no they're idea doing. No idea what they're doing. A lot of information on the adjustments that we're about to make today in order to get this mower to a height that we feel will be uh, better, there's a bird on your green right and, now. Is, he, is that digging up grubs? No, he's, he's just out there messing around. He's just out there green goofing. <laughs> we'll get back into that uh, a little later, probably too much, because we're going to need that a lot. Um, we got some very fancy measuring calipers. tools here. Yeah, calipers. This is going to measure things down to, is this uh, thousands of an inch? Yep. So that's, that's a pretty cool little device there. To be able to kind of give you a visual of how the, much we're going to move this yeah, thing how, cause it's, and where it's at. As, as dramatic as it sounds, it's really not a lot. Yeah. Into that in a little bit. And then, once again, Accu Products for the win, they send us an official greens meter. Right. Which we ref, will we'll probably refer to as a stent meter almost consistently throughout this whole video just because that's where my brain goes. This is an actual official like USGA approved uh, greens meter. Greens, what's the name? Green speed meter. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Accu Products. I'm just gonna call it a stent meter for the rest of the video. This is a stent meter, and basically what it is, if you didn't watch the video where him and I actually stood in this exact same space and we made one from scratch, uh, this is actually official. We can say that our greens measure our exact. exactly what they say yep. they measure. We're not gonna get into really how this works because I feel like we made a whole video on how stent meters work. We'll give you a rough idea. This one is a little bit more precise because it actually has the trough where the where ball, the ball lays. will sit and, and lift it, it'll take off. Yeah, well you asked me earlier how this works. So this notch right here, you set a ball in it and then as soon as the rail reaches, I believe it was 20 degrees, the ball releases down the track and then rolls out onto the green. We'll show you that a little later in the day today. Once we get this mower set, we're gonna go out to the green, cut it, and then give you a couple readings to see if we've improved the speed alone just by Cutting it. Adjusting the Adjusting cut height. height. So, adjusting the cut height, this is the first video in this series of videos of where we're going to try to speed this green up to, uh, I, I just I just want it so fast that it's just not and playable. During our investigation of the mower, we've also found that the bed knife and the reel do not touch each other. They do not cut paper. Good point. Look at him paying attention. So. Yes, that is also something we're going to get into later is that we noticed that the the bed knife and the reel that does the cutting with all the blades on it, they, there's no contact. And there's supposed to be a very slight contact. And we're going to dive into that later. There's a lot of things to investigate. So let's just get let's into it. it. What did, what did let's you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Which let's one should we say? Let's just go. <laughs> what are you doing? Waiting for you. Like always, right? And you've got the camera, so. So we're going to expose the bed knife by tilting the mower back. Okay, so we're tilting it up like this. Now, I can't, I feel like we can't stress this enough. This is not like a, this is two idiots trying to figure something out. Like, don't use this, like, I don't want someone to ruin their mower watching Exactly. Us so Let us ruin ours. We're actually, down in the links below, below in the description, I'll put like some actual like credible sources to do this work. <laughs> this is just our way of doing it. Yeah. So let's go down here and show them what we see and what we're supposed to see. Okay. So that is the bed knife. And then above it obviously are the blades and they're supposed to be just the, the slightest contact. But the, the purpose of this bed knife is to catch, is to pinch the grass between the bed knife and the blade and then get a clean cut off of it. And what's a good way to see if you're getting that good By cut? putting a piece of paper in there. And go ahead and yeah, let's rotate the blade and it should cut that paper. And you can see it's not even coming close. So we almost had two things working against us when we were trying to speed that green up. One is we were cutting, we weren't even really cutting the grass. We were kind of just like yanking it. Well, we were, I don't even know how we got a good cut as we did, to tell you the truth. Do, do we need the manual for this part or should we no. just wing it? You're, I know how to do it. Oh, sweet. I already read it. What's the step? Okay. There are, first, you got to make sure that this is not engaged. This is your, that engages your mower. Okay. Can you explain to people what this is? Uh, Randy tore this. No, that is not me. I tore this apart because it was making a clicking sound, and I bought a new piece for it, but apparently I didn't do very good. 
So now we have to pull this and this together to make that tight so it runs. Otherwise it goes <laughs> Okay. I can tear things apart. I'm just not very good at putting them back. Together. A child can tear <laughs> things apart. Don't get sidetracked. These are adjustments right here. There's okay. one here. So that cog wheel. And there's one on each side. So one there, and then there's one right here. And then in spinning these, what does that change? Every click. If you see, there's a little, there's a, like in the cog wheel, there's, there's little teeth. Yeah. Every click is seven tenths of an inch. So and that, if you click one there, you click one here. But can you tell the folks at home what that's changing? It is blowing, lowering the blade or the reel to the bed knife. So first order of business is to get that bed knife at the appropriate distance away from well, from the, side to side reel. in the middle. Okay. So we want this paper to cut in all three places. This sounds easy. Well, we're gonna find out. So we got three quarters inch wrench. And we're gonna go, what do you think? Three? Three clicks on each? Well, that's assuming that they're set at the same height on each side. Well, I'm just, that's all I can do is assume that they're set the same height. All right, let's get in. We can always go backwards if we have to. Okay. So we're gonna go clockwise. Three clicks. Oh, you gotta get a wrench in here, which stinks. One, two, three. You're getting a feedback from that little thing that's in there, that, that little, little prong right there. Every time it slips into a new notch there, that's like one like crack. Yep. Okay. Let's go on this side then. The same thing. Three clicks. Clockwise. It's just these are a pain to get to. Wouldn't it be uh, better yeah, to get like a, a long ratchet? One move. <laughs> one. Two. Three. Okay, we moved them all the same. And now we'll take the paper and see if we did anything. So, it's now pulling the paper. Oh yeah, it's getting a little bit, it's not just folding it. Ooh, that almost cut it. Almost cut it in the middle. Let's see what this side looks like. Ooh, that's perfect. Yeah. So that means that this head size this is a little higher. And we gotta lower that down. What do you think? Two more? I'm gonna go just one. I think two, because it didn't even fold, it didn't even cut. It was grabbing it. Let's go two. Alright. Let's say clockwise. So we'll make sure we go the right way. Yeah, towards me. One. This is riveting, by the way. Two. Okay. You watch your finger in there. Yeah, you should wear gloves, by the way. Oh yeah, and probably all kinds of safety stuff. There you go. Beautiful. Cut. Yeah, check this side. I say we're good. Dude, that was actually looked like we knew what we were doing. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I think so. I like it. I hope the rest of the video goes this good. <laughs> Even that alone, I bet if you took that over to the green and cut it, it's even though make we, a huge difference. Yeah, we, you would get a it's ton gonna make grass. a huge difference. There's so many people right now, like professional greenskeepers, probably watching this video having an aneurysm because they're just like, "You idiots didn't check this like <laughs> every time." So now, is it Aki gauge time? Yes, it is. Break out the Aki gauge. Here, carry it down there in the case so it looks real cool. <laughs> I can't even believe you're letting me hold this. One accurate gauge. Now. What are you confused by? Front to the back. It should show you. Should I let you figure it out on your own or should I tell you? You want me to give you a clue? Well, the magnet's here. Okay, but wait, wait, let me give you a clue. You have to look. See the gauge. <laughs> you have to look at that side. <laughs> There's going to be clues throughout this video as to why you shouldn't be taking this seriously. But before we hook this up, we're going to loosen these two nuts right here you're up here yeah these two and then these are your adjustment nuts okay maybe we should see where it's at show people where the gauge is as far as the height man look at you you're like thinking ahead and there stuff. you go all right so now we're going to take the Aki gauge out and we're going to place it on 
So, hold on, before you get your head in the way, let me explain what's going on here. Right, we're gonna make sure we get a nice clean surface. Okay, so there's the roller drum in the back here, and then there is the groomer up front that these are the two points of contact when you put it onto the green. This is what comes in, in contact with the surface of it. What the Aki gauge does, go ahead and place it on this side so you can show them. We already did that part. I didn't know that. First thing we're gonna do is put the back end of the gauge up against the rear drum, and then the front portion is gonna touch this grooming bar, so go ahead and do that. Get it nice and perpendicular, square there. And, and this cool little dude right here, you push this up and it engages a magnet. There's a little plunger right here that you can push up. So once that plunger's up, we're gonna lower that and snug it up against the bed knife so Good. that it rests on it just like that. And then it should be hands-free once the magnet's engaged. So you can let go of, the, of it and then we can get a readout. So you wanna sit up here and you wanna tell them what we're seeing? I gotta get my glasses. You got your glasses? Yep. Yeah, anyway, what I'm seeing is 256. So we right now, as it stands, are at 256 thousandths. That basically is a quarter inch, which in the world of greenskeeping is unheard of. It, it, it's, I, I have, the roller must be the only thing that makes that thing have any speed at all. Yeah, because that's ridiculously be. high. That's ridiculously high. And it's supposed to be set at 156, so I'm thinking the guy misread the gauge. I would think that would be the only reason that that would be. You could be off a hundred thousandths. That's that's a lot. So let's show the people exactly how far this is off. And there's where we're at. There, that's where we're at now. That's where we're at now. And then where are you taking and it? And then to? I'm going to bring it back to. So that's how much we're going to move. That's almost half. All almost. right, so we're going to pop this off. Now you got to. Disengage now. You gotta slide it up to get that. There you go. Now take the magnet off. How do you do that? You just pull it straight out. Oh, just pull it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're whopper jawed. Well, I'm sure I am. You like I'm be, straighten it when I get there. You gotta be perpendicular. Is that straight? Yeah. Now, I will say that, you know, you work in a television remote is a stretch. Watching you use this, it's kind of like a, that. That's a pretty good representation of how user friendly this is. Yeah, that is really very easy for it. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> where are we at? It looks, that is so much different. different. That is at... at 275. That's another 25,000. No, that's, that's at 175, because it's under the two. Oh, piece. it is. So that's 175. So this thing is totally whopper jaw. How does it not, maybe that's why it leaves lines. That's exactly why, because we were, we. You, we could really make the stripes show this year. Yeah. And that's why, it's because it's cut and lopsided. All these greenskeepers out here that have been like, you know, measuring their whole success of their green off of your information. And this is the kind of equipment you're using. <laughs> Next step is on the groomer bar here in the end, we have to lighten up these nuts on each side. And then this bowl up top here, you can turn it uh, either direction to raise or lower the height. Oh my gosh. Well, at least it was tight. Oh, that's, well, that's close. It's not exactly the reading we had. Well, listen, okay, this is a good point because I feel like I, I, I want to talk this out with you. My dad was concerned because he's not getting the exact same reading. It's off by five thousandths of an inch. You have to think, if this side is at 175 and this side is at 265, if you move an inch in either direction, you're gonna change this number drastically because it's such a, a severe slope. On well, it. and you also gotta think that these are have dings in them. Yeah, and they're ground down differently, yeah. which is, a, is important to make sure everything is nice and cleaned off, which we did before we started. So let's make sure it's nice and square though. You're the square guy. <laughs> See, we're almost perfect yeah. where it was before. Do you wanna lower that side down first? Oh, since yeah. that was the higher side? That's where we're gonna go. So we're gonna put this on here. And this should show us immediately if we're going the right way or not. Yeah. So as my dad turns this uh, bolt up here, you should see this gauge move. So you see how it slides up? But it's going the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, we wanna take it back down. Now, hold on. Let me explain this to people 
As my dad lowers it down, you can see the gauge start to climb back down. That's really windy. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's explain to them what the little gauge does in the big gauge. So the little gauge is reading out tenths of an inch, and the big gauge is reading out hundredths of an inch. So as this goes down, you can read it. So there you can see it winding back down, and we want to get to 100 right there. 50. So that puts us at 150 thousandths yep. spot on. Now, should we tighten this side up? I would not tighten it yet. We'll kind of bounce back and forth and make sure each side measures where we want it before we tighten it back up. All right. Happy with that. Let's slide it back over to this side, and let's do the same thing. Yeah, just go about between these two right here. We're almost on. Okay, that makes sense. Because that was at 170 or something. Yeah, 175. And then when we moved this down a full tenth of an inch, it brought this back down too. So that's actually spot on. And we need to tighten these back up to set them back down. And see how much the gauge moves. That was surprisingly easy. I say that and then once we post the video, people are like, you did everything wrong. I'm gonna go hands free for a second just to help my dad out. Just to get this thing set properly. So this might be a little bit more of a montage. Beautiful, right? Yeah, should be. Cool. Easy, that is a delicate I think, well, is, is there a way to release this magnet? You can't treat it like your putter. Uh, we have the mower now set to one fifty, the appropriate cut height, but also we adjusted the blade to the bed knife. Everything should be fine-tuned, set, ready to go. Really, we're back to where a mower just should naturally be at. Well, for our green. Next order of business, now that everything is uh, operating as should, we are going to take the stent meter and we are going to take it over to the green. We're going to cut it at the new height, but first we're going to get a reading and see if just changing the cut height is enough to speed the green up. All right, we're going to broom it. Yeah, we'll broom it to get it to get first all the we'll breaths. do this yes then broom it yes then cut it correct then do this again correct okay <laughs> here we set on the putting green i don't like to make it so dramatic no. we're on our green just real quickly because we did make a video about this feel free to check it out about how to a step meter works and how to actually uh to measure your green but basically we're going to put a t down at the front of the step meter and then we are going to put a ball in the trough here. That's your cue. <laughs> the idea is, is you want to find the flattest part of your green that you can. Uh, you need about 10 feet or so, but good way to do that, set the ball down in the trough and it shouldn't roll in either direction. You're in a fairly flat part. Our green, not so flat, but this is the best we could find. And then we're going to measure out after doing it three times, the average distance of how long that is. And then we're going to do it in the other direction. Seven plus seven, 14 divided by two, seven. We're rolling at a seven. And you just mowed it yesterday. Uh, that is, that's slow. Super. All right, so now that we have our reading of our ultra slow green, next order of business is to take these push brooms here. We are going to stand up that quarter inch long grass that we have been cutting it to. And since we roll it, we've just folded that grass down. So the idea is, is to stand it back up double cut it with the new cut height perpendicular so we cut it once in one direction and then another time perpendicular to that line take off as much grass as we can and hopefully that alone will help speed the green up let's go do it we're hoping to take it to what an eight or nine i'm hoping by not rolling it this at least takes it to an eight eight i hope okay <laughs> you mind if I mow? No, I'd love you to mow. <laughs> <laughs> My dad is, uh, we went inside and ate some lunch and he is legitimately nervous about cutting the green. Can you tell him why? Uh, we, we lowered it quite a bit. I, 
I think it's gonna be fine. As long as we don't have a butch, I don't care. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Set that up, or you want me to follow you around with that? I think I don't want you to touch the camera. <laughs> I cannot imagine why. All right, it's go time. So that is uh, down the line there of the cut we just made. And you can see the visual difference between the two. That is so cool. I mean, I know we geek out about this green a lot, but this thing looks absolutely awesome oh, right now. It looks as good as any golf course green there is. After cutting it to this height, I really don't see, do you want to face me so we're not getting yeah. the whole Sasquatch here? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the, I would say after cutting it to this length, I would say we're probably good here. We're, I think we're maxed out. I'm really excited to see what that the, the green speed is now because it looks faster. All right, yeah, let's go grab we're shooting for an eight. Let's go grab the green speed meter and let's see what we're at now. So we have the stent meter back out on the green, setting on somewhat level service. I have my dad drop it again. like an 8.2? 8.2. That's pretty good. So a tenth of an inch gave us another foot in the green speed reach. So what this tells me is that we were doing that video where we tried to make our greens fast with one hand tied behind our back because the mower that we were cutting with it we thought was at 150 thousandths and it was actually closer to like two. 175 yeah. and 265. Yeah. So it was sitting like this. Yeah, and it was And how it even made a good cut on this green is beyond me. As I stated earlier in the video, this is really like step one of making this green faster. So the thing we have to do now is, is keep cutting it at this height at different directions each time, really getting it at the proper height it should be consistently throughout the green, but then also starting to top dress it at this height and starting to let that sand settle in and not on top of folded grass. Right. And then from there, we can start rolling it. And I'm thinking the next time we come out here, we cut it, we top dress it, we roll it 65 times, <laughs> and then we have the world's fastest backyard putting green. That I hope I can make that the title of the next video. I gotta check with legal, to make sure. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try to make the world's fastest backyard putting green next video having all the knowledge that we have learned from this and all the mistakes we made in the last one i think that we're ready to do it but just saying the one thing that that gauge is a game changer i just want to clarify that this video is not sponsored by accu products they simply reached out to us we're like hey this probably will help you in your journey to make your green faster and uh, just gave us that and i really do appreciate that but i will put links down below for um, Accu Products page, if you want to pick up an Accu gauge, or if you're interested in green getting speed. yeah the the green speed uh, reader that we have, we'll put links to that stuff. We'll also put links down there on how to properly use it. Uh, we probably made a lot of mistakes. Please put some comments down below. We always like looking at those. We learn a lot from them because I know a lot of you are greenskeepers as your profession, and we love reading that feedback and like, hey, you guys can do this better, or hey, you're you're right on. Keep going the way you are. That one we don't get so much. Not but, so much. But we do appreciate it. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please thumbs it up if you liked it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, we will see you later. All right. So what do you think, Greenskeeper's Revenge next?